for an extended period of time, all the way through Thursday at 6 o'clock. You know, when we issue red flag warnings, and we have done so quite a few times already this season, they're for a few hours, uh, maybe half of a day or a little more than that. But this is going to go on for more, uh, a longer period of time. So the concern is, of course, is how much can we stretch our fire resources under conditions like this should a fire break out? So here we have a fire, the easy fire uh, forecasting today in this area. So I want to pinpoint this area. We're looking at one to three percent relative humidity as a possibility, but it's been staying steady at about seven percent relative humidity. I wish that was good news. That's terrible. Seven percent relative humidity is awful. Very bone dry conditions and it could get worse. Northeast winds coming in at 40 to 50. We have been seeing that. We have also been seeing gusts of 60, but actually 60 plus. So again, through that area, we're still going to continue to see some very strong winds. How long is this going to go on for today? Some of the strong peak winds are currently happening right now. So that'll continue through about two o'clock this afternoon. I mean, when I talk about extreme winds that we're experiencing, we're going to see the extreme winds till about two. Unfortunately, uh, we'll get away from the extreme winds after 2 o'clock, but guess what? It's going to be strong winds. Uh, it's not really a great reduction in speed here. So we're going to see instead of 53 mile per hour gusts, 43 mile per hour gusts, and then that sticks around for a protracted period of time, which we don't want to see, all the way through tomorrow. Look at that. Now we're in tomorrow at 12 in the afternoon, and we still have 41 mile per hour gusts through Santa Clarita. So this is uh, not good news. Extreme conditions, we're going to go to strong Santa Ana conditions. And then eventually on Thursday afternoon, we'll get down to moderate Santa Ana the conditions. The temperature goes up 1,000, I should say. For every 1,000 feet, uh, the uh, temperature goes up by 5 degrees. So 5,000, it's up by 5, 10, 15. At 2,000 feet, it's up by 20 degrees. By uh, 25,000 feet, we're up to uh, uh, 30 degrees. So you start out with a temperature of 41, your ending temperature is 71 degrees. So that's the reason why it's not so hot, because we're starting out with cold there. was how are the winds affecting the aerial attack um, that's a very good question appreciate you asking that early on in the incident we were able to get uh, a few loads of fixed wing retardant which is our FOS check dropping retardant and use it on the flanks to protect some of the uh, structures especially in the 23 corridor area early on in the incident we hit very turbulent air and we had to shut down air operations just out of safety for the pilots and safety for the uh, the members of the crews of those those aircraft so what we do is we continually gauge it. We keep an air attack platform, which is a basic supervisor up over the airspace. That airspace is monitored. And when we can safely fly aircraft in there, we take advantage of that time to continue with our assault efforts or aerial assault on the fire. Yes, early on in the incident, uh, Reagan Library was identified as a threat. We had, like I said, we had a very robust response with pre-positioned resources. And immediately when the fire crossed here, Rajada Road, we put strike teams of resources, which are engines assembled in increments of five into that area. And we were able to protect the Reagan Library. Uh, currently fire moved around the perimeter of the Reagan Library and we had successful stands up there on, uh, on protecting the library and the infrastructure around the facility. So it's no longer under threat then? The entire footprint of the fire is still under threat. The uh, area around there has burned through there, so there's still residual heat that is in the area, and we are calling the entire footprint of the fire still a threat to anything in escape right now, especially with the winds that we have. Yeah. Let's go uh, to um, uh, the Reagan Library right now, and Sid Garcia, who has been dealing with powerful winds all morning long. Sid? Yeah, it's been crazy after uh, this is where you can see how far the or how close the fire burned up to the Reagan Library and firefighters were able to keep it with the water drops keep it away. But now here's the concern as we go to the left, Circa, let me step out of your way here. You see where our eyewitness news van is? We have flames shooting up on top over there, so we may have to move here in a little bit. But the winds are just howling up here. Um, as we've been talking about 
thought all morning. I have never had to deal here in Southern California with winds this strong, this consistent, but the um, sky cranes and the helicopters came by here earlier this morning, and they were able to keep the flames away from the Reagan Library. I was talking to somebody with the library um, not too long ago, and he was telling me that the, the library's fine when you consider the millions of pieces of historical notes, everything from the Reagan administration when he was president, when he was governor. There is the Egyptian exhibit going on right now with the whole slew of Francis artifacts right now. He reminded me that this library, this facility was designed with wildfires in mind. What to do in case a fire goes up the hill to burn the facility. Um, like I said, he was telling me that no damage to the library and depending on how conditions are, they were seriously thinking of trying to open up the library tomorrow. But where we are right now, the winds are just blowing through here like you would not believe. You can hear it through my microphone, but to the right of the Reagan Library is a residential neighborhood. We saw some of the fire engines go over in that direction because that's where the fire was being shoved by the by these strong breezes over there. If you're not familiar with the area here in Simi Valley where the library is, it's up on a hill. It is one of the most spectacular views anywhere in Southern California. And this is just a very beautiful facility when you come up here to visit. But to the right of the camera, behind the library, and across the street from uh, Madeira Road, it's all residential, beautiful neighborhood, and that's where the concern is right now. But the good news is, is that the library is intact, no damage done. But as you can hear through my microphone, and you can see in the trees, and you can see with the flashing lights in the distance over here, the wind up here has been relentless. It has not really let up. There would be a, maybe a lull of about maybe 10, 15 seconds where it's just strong, and then it just became extremely strong. And it's, um, I mean, I have to hang out of the guardrail here sometimes just to keep my balance, and it's just, I've never had to cover anything like this before with the winds. I mean, we've chased wildfire and the wind-driven fires before, and you're looking at 34 mile an hour gusts, but man, this is just something that we've never had to deal with. And you can see how, in the, off of the distance here, just how close the flames got to the library facility itself. But so far, so good. It's just extremely windy up here and smoky right now. And as I look back to where our van is parked, uh, the flames have died down over there. But I tell you guys, the wind up here is ferocious. It's powerful. I don't know how many more adjectives I can use to describe just how powerful the gusts are up here right now. And um, if you're being evacuated, the 60 freeway. I want you to look at the center divide. It's on fire. There's some debris over there. The embers traveled across the freeway from this fast-moving fire, and it's burning the center divide right now. Some debris out there. This gives you an idea of the wind gusts out here and how they're just sending embers. They can start up debris sitting on the side of, in the middle of a freeway, basically a six, seven, eight lane freeway. And right now, as far as we know, oh, here comes another gust. Hold on, hang on. Oh my goodness. I know you can see and hear it, but boy, it's different when you can feel that wind. That was so powerful, it's amazing. Look at this, it's causing it, look, turn around Ernesto. Uh, oh, you just missed it, it caused a little dust devil right in oh, the middle see of it. the road. It is, yo, know, it's so intense right now. It's unbelievable, look right here, Ernesto, look to the right. See how that smoke is just swirling and spinning like a tornado of smoke? That's what's happening out here. The, the wind will die down for maybe a minute or two and then all of a sudden, whoosh, it's like, Somebody opened up the faucets on a huge water plug. Hold on. That gives you an idea. I hope you heard that. Because I felt it with all the sand and debris kicking up and basically hitting me in the side of the head. And that's not to the right. I think they're going to do a water drop right over there with the helicopter. We've seen air tankers out here. Multiple drops. They've been painting the side of this hillside trying to keep these flames away. Now, dude, here we go. Here we go. Wow, they see that he's still dropping. Hopefully he can hit his mark. That's what these pilots are saying. When the wind is so gusty, it's so strong, 
they sometimes are useless because they'll try to drop on a target and they'll miss it by 50 yards. Big rig over here that is on its side as well. When this one here happened to topple over right in front of our newsman, this uh, driver and his occupant were inside. They were still trapped inside. Made my way to it. They kicked the windshield out of the big rig to get themselves out. But the CHP has uh, mentioned to me to tell our viewers, if you're a uh, if you're driving a large profile vehicle, stay off the uh, 15 freeway between Rancho Cucamonga and Devore. It, the wind gusts out here right now about. 40 miles an hour. This driver was very lucky. He's resting up what looks against this little wall here. But let me show you what's on the other side. It's about a 100 foot fall. So he came within just feet of coming over that wall and going down 100 feet. And residents tell us they've been through this uh, four or five times, I think in the last five or six years. Uh, the good news is the fuel that is burning is light fuel for that reason. It's burned before, it's that light grass, so it doesn't burn with the intensity of the thick brush that we see sometimes. That's one bit of good news. As you get across here on the 23, Brian, I don't know if you can pan across, you can see this hillside does have thicker brush, and there's a firefighter up there too. So this is the area they want to keep it from because this is heavier fuel and this could really take off. And of course, we have the homes on this side too. So a lot to worry about. Firefighters on the ground watching. Well, it very you close. know, embers flying. And when we, when we get grass embers flying, they don't go very far, you know. So we've been seeing a lot of grass embers, uh, grassy conditions. Um, so when we see some of these accelerants and fuels, um, there, you know, I know that we're saying like, oh, well, that looks good. However, in between there, we do have little shrubs of sumac, chaparral, and those are the embers that just take off and they fly miles and miles. So unfortunately, I'm seeing some of that right now. Uh, we don't want to see it get into any type of brush or trees. Um, so that's unfortunate to see. And they're going to, you know, this is going to continue again through about two o'clock and uh, we're going to keep a very close eye and if you are in high you know you don't have to be in a very high ridge top or hillside to get some of those 60 mile per a mile long a winding beautiful road that comes up from madera to the reagan library which is on top of a hill which is part of the reason why the wind is so strong here much stronger than, than in lower areas up on the top of the hill we are getting gusts, I would estimate, at, at 50 or 60 miles an hour. At times, as uh, well as Duke Black with the library director was saying, at times it is difficult to stand up. And where we are standing here now, it is getting smoky enough that we're having a very difficult time seeing. Jeff, I think we need to retreat. We need to retreat. We got another bush caught fire right behind us, and all of a sudden it got very hot. So we are retreating to the other side of the sidewalk. And Jeff, let's go forward this way. Let's go this way. Let's get away from the wind. So we're going up, upwind to try to get away from this flame that just came up to the side of Presidential Drive. Boy, we can, we can see just how, embers. how close that is burning feeling, to you, Patrick. Yeah. Yeah, I was feeling the embers uh, hitting my hand and uh, it was coming right across. So this roadway is about 40 feet wide and the embers were just coming straight across to us. So, I mean, the moral of the story here is that this fire is moving so quickly. It is leaving brush behind that is reigniting. So this is not a case where firefighters can relax and just watch the leading end of the fire. They have to worry about areas where the fire has already moved through. Yeah, nor, nor is it a case where you can relax at all, Patrick. Chief so Sam was gonna, just saying to me. The wind is coming up again. We're going to find a safer position. We'll throw it back so to you. You're absolutely right, Carolyn. You need to have a lookout at all times. You can't turn your back on this fire. You never know when it's going to flare back up. And, you know, the fire is so erratic. Stay in an open space area like that. That's a safety zone where you have open space and no fuel around you. So, but you, you, very dangerous to be in these situations, not just for the reporters, but that's why we ask people to evacuate mm -hmm. and do so immediately. Yeah, let, let's get up to Megan Reyes yeah, over so like we see flying. Yeah, extremely erratic fire behavior, a lot of embers and uh, going in different directions. So do not let your guard down. Let's bring in meteorologist David Bigger on this topic again for us, because not only do we have the strong Santa Ana winds, but we know fire creates its own weather system. So it really uh, can cause a lot of issues. Yeah, and, and a lot of it is sometimes driven by topography. So something interesting from Patrick Healy's live location where he was, 
when we were looking at the view from the helicopter, it kind of had this almost bend in the terrain there. So he was kind of in the pocket of it, if you will. And so what will happen is, uh, pilots will know this term once I say it, there's this uh, principle called Bernoulli's principle, which is when air flows into a narrow area, it speeds up. And so what happens is you're having this wind kind of come in through this terrain. It's kind of compressing in, speeding up and going up the hill. So that can carry a lot of the fire up the hill with it very quickly. That's why you tend to see the fire kind of going into like these more kind of deeper pocket areas rather than some of those kind of poking out overlooks. I'm sure Chief Sam can talk a little bit more about this. Well, you're absolutely right. Not only that's what we call a shoot or a, a drainage ditch where the fire moves, the air moves up quicker, but also the fuel gets preheated as well from the fire below. Mm -hmm. It just heats up ahead of it and ignites very quickly. You can watch, but scary to see. Yeah. And then have you guys ever been through something like this before? Yes, in 2003, this whole hillside up here was on fire coming down, and they got it out. It never reached these hills, but this spread really fast. It started at about 6 o'clock on that hillside. It just ran up this hill, like, really quick. It was amazing. I mean, now you're saying, you, we had talked about this before, you said this hill's always been a worry for you. Yeah, we've been here 20 years, and it's never been lit yet. So I think we're okay for a while because I don't think it's gonna be lit again for a while. Well, thank you guys for talking to us. I'm glad you're safe. I'm glad you're all right. Um, and this is just one of the neighborhoods that's being affected here by the easy fire. Right now our response this morning brought in several agencies to handle the structure threat and the immediate life threat. Our plan of action out there is to get people out of harm's way initially and protect valuable resources and the structures and infrastructures that surround the communities of Wood Ranch in the Simi Valley area the areas of Moore Park, Sunset Hills, and the city of Thousand Oaks, and several unincorporated areas that surround the county and those cities that are in there. The fire outflanked us very rapidly today, pushed by those 40 to 50 mile an hour winds. We did experience gusts up to 65 miles an hour this morning, which made long range spotting um, very, very dangerous and also quickly outpaced the initial attack resources. Our fire chief mentioned earlier that we were prepared for this. We had several resources on standby, including some of our state cooperators, local agencies that were able to stand up equipment, and we were ready since last night with the projected winds. We work very closely with the National Weather Service on being prepared for these type of events, and our actions right now are to stay engaged on the flanks of the fire and keep it right now within our box. Our current box for the incident is the Highway 118 corridor on the north side. The east side of the fire is the Madera Road area of Simi Valley into Wood Ranch. On the southern end of the fire, it is the actual area of Madera Road where it comes into Sunset Hills Boulevard through the 23 corridor. And on the far west side, we are using the 23 freeway again over to Olson Road and up to Sunset Hills Boulevard. We have resources all around the incident currently right now actively engaged in structure protection and life safety measures. We feel we have a good contingency plan out in front of it in the event fire does cross the 23 freeway and impact the houses in the Sunset Hills area of Thousand Oaks. Working with the Sheriff's Department, our evacuation orders went out rapidly through several mediums. Not only were we able to get people out of harm's way, the evacuation centers proved very useful this morning and being able to get people into those areas and out of the way for firefighting resources to get in there. Thank you very much.